because men who express their emotions in the Philippines tend to be considered as uh, weak. Um, and then men who, who take on um, roles that are usually associated with women, like doing housework, is also considered uncommon. Okay, that's, that, these are examples of what we call stereotypes. And because society tends to put people in these different kinds of roles, that causes the problem when somebody does not fit in that, that box. And if you look at it um, as um, overall, um, big, the bigger picture of it, th that is also where um, gender-based violence occurs. Example of these problems is in the Philippines, parte del mundo, a los hombres no se les enseña a expresar sus emociones. Si lo hacen, se les asume como débiles o afeminados. Eh, eso es gra gravemente un problema, particularmente cuando asumen roles que son considerados socialmente como la mujer, por ejemplo, amo de casa o criar a los hijos. Eh, la sociedad asigna roles y el problema empieza cuando uno no encaja en esa caja. So the law here is uh, providing uh, penalties for behavior that is uh, gender-based uh, sexual harassment or gender-based online sexual harassment. Therefore, if you are a uh, member of the LGBT and you experience uh, online somebody calling you names, somebody saying uh, that you should, I mean, you, in, you should die, things like that. Now, this is actually an unfortunate experience that uh, women, uh, men, uh, well some men of course, uh, especially those who are uh, homosexuals, uh, those who are queer, those are transgender, they experience these things. And the Safe Spaces Act provides um, penalties, a very strong penalties against to, to stop and to address this kind of behavior. La ley prevé penas para los acosos sexuales. Estos son asuntos que, como decía bien Edna, los, se encuentran más de parte del de LGBTQ, que son lesbianas, gays, personas, no sé cuáles eh, pero que son muchas veces problemas online, muchas veces reciben comentarios como matate, eh, cosas por el estilo. Y la ley impone imprisonment y fines. And also, at the same time, the law requires uh, those duty bearers, or let's say the schools, employers, owners of restaurants, malls, etc., establishments, to make sure that they do their part in preventing gender-based sexual harassment. La ley prevé penas de prisión o multas muy elevadas, y además tiene la obligación de que eh, aquellos que tienen una capacidad de proteger o deber de hacerlo lo hagan, como ser empleadores, eh, dueños de establecimientos de servicio público, etc. So what, what is our role in this? Uh, to the Filipino community, um, you members of our uh, uh, we have family back home, we have friends back home, and we wanted to take this opportunity to tell you about this law. Though it's not so new, it was passed in 2019. Uh, we wanted this uh, to tell you that uh, forms of violence um, and the protection that the law has is not just for women but also for different genders. Yeah. And, okay. and on, on our part, what we can do is we can, we can tell our family about this, especially if you have friends or family or people you know who have experienced these things. Uh, and that they have uh, they have legal uh, redress, or that there the law is there to provide uh, protection. Bueno, eh, ¿qué nos afecta a nosotros, comunidad filipina? Eh, yo les quería contar esta ley que no es tan nueva, es de 2019, porque todos tenemos familia, todos tienen familia en Filipinas, y puede ser que sepan de casos de acoso o de discriminación. Eh, les quería contar que bueno, esta ley pues, es un lugar al que uno puede acudir para pedir auxilio, que hay, hay remedios y hay donde ir. More, uh, more importantly, uh, please, uh, please remember that this kind of sexual harassment can also happen on the internet. So, uh, 
So we should also be mindful of the things that we see on the internet. And uh, as much as possible, uh, let's be, let's uh, try, let's try to keep the internet also a safe space. Because it's a different kind of space. It's not a physical space, it's a virtual space. But it's also a place where a lot of violence, online sexual violence, takes place. So if you have friends who are working and who experience um, gender-based sexual harassment uh, or gender-based online sexual harassment, and the forms that we speak are actually plenty. So what, I just gave a few examples, like when you're walking down the street and then somebody shouts at you or says things to you. When, when, you, when somebody makes unwanted uh, advances, like asks for your number, or let's say in the workplace, you have a, you know your friend has a coworker who is stalking her, right? Like, uh, persistently insisting, oh, we should go out on a date, we should go out to eat. There is, uh, the law will now uh, come in to help. So what are, what, what do we, what should we do, okay, on our part? And how can we help, uh, how can we help make our public spaces and the internet a safe space? One is don't do it. Please don't be the one to commit gender-based sexual harassment. That's the first one. Refrain. Don't do it. Okay? Number two, discourage it. Okay? You you notice that somebody somebody likes to make comments about um, your friend or your relative who is uh, say transgender or somebody or a friend who is gay. You discourage you discourage that kind of behavior. It, that's one thing that you can do. And third would be provide support. If you know somebody who has experienced these things, please provide support to that person. Don't, um, let, let's try not to put, put the blame on the one who experienced it because that's also the tendency of society. We tend to blame the victim. Like, you dress like, that's how you dress or that's how you behave. And then the burden shifts on the person who is who already experienced the violence. Then lastly, if you see it, report it. That's what you can tell your uh, friends or family back home. If you see it, report it. This, is, this will help contribute to the culture of no, uh, zero tolerance. Si 
esa gente tiene responsabilidad. Uh, the, the first and more exciting part of this activity 